In this tutorial, I'll show you how to import data from Protein Data Bank files. I'll import an example DNA molecule and I'll make an animation with it. To import data into Blender, go to File Import and we see a range of formats that we can import from. For instance, this option allows us to import models in the 3D Studio Max format. There are many more file formats that can be imported into Blender. Go to File User Preferences, click the Add-ons button, click the Import Export category, and we see lots of file formats, and there are more you can download from the internet. The ones that are ticked are the ones that are available by default. Click the white triangle for a description of the add-on, the location where you can access the add-on and a link to the documentation. I want to use the add-on for loading atoms. Tick to enable the add-on. If I close now it will be available for the rest of this Blender session. If I want it to be available for future Blender sessions, I must save the user settings. Now when we go to File Import, there's an option for PDB files. So where can we get PDB files? Doing a search on Google, the second highest result is the Worldwide Protein Data Bank, which is an overarching organisation for the storage of 3D structures of proteins and other complex molecules. It has four members, the Protein Data Bank Japan, Protein Data Bank in Europe, and two American-based organizations. The RCSB is the site that I'm going to use. At the RCSB site, I'm going to search for a DNA molecule with the classic double helix shape. Typing in DNA, we see that there are many molecules of type DNA and many with DNA in their names. The site allows you to refine your search by these categories. Clicking search, we can drill down by categories and under the category polymer type, there is a subcategory DNA, but there are still over 1,500 results. I'm going to use the advanced search, which allows me to search within the structure title. I'm going to search for BDNA, which I know has the double helix that I'm looking for, and that search gives me a more manageable 127 results. Scrolling down to see the results, each molecule has a unique protein database ID, a structure title, and an image. The molecule I'm going to use as an example is 3BSE. This molecule nicely shows the double helix, the yellow and the red lines. The molecule has 16 base pairs. If you imagine the molecule as a twisted ladder, then the base pairs are the rungs of the ladder. They are either red and blue or green and yellow. To download the molecule, click Download Files, choose PDB File Text, click Save and OK. Before importing data into Blender, it's quite handy to have an empty scene. Press A twice to select the camera, the cube and the lamp. Press X to delete the lot. File, save, and I'm going to call the empty scene blank. And click save. File, import PDB files. In the bottom left hand corner are options for the import. I will look at these in more detail in other tutorials. For now I just want a camera and a lamp added in appropriate positions. Go to the folder where you downloaded your molecule. Select the molecule and import. 
Zoom back with the mouse wheel and drag with the middle mouse button to rotate the view. That's the basics of how to import a protein database molecule. In the rest of this tutorial I'll show you how I made an animation with the molecule. Drag to open up the outliner window. I'm going to hide all the oxygen atoms. Click the eye icon to hide them in the 3D view. Click the camera icon to hide them in the render. I'm going to hide the calcium atoms and I'm going to hide any sticks that have been imported. There is still the master calcium atom in the middle. Control clicking would have hidden it, but you can open up the calcium and hide the NURBS sphere within. If we look through the camera that was added when we imported the molecule, we see the whole of the molecule, but at an angle of about 45 degrees. I want a more square on view, so I'm going to change the view to the right view. Zoom back with the mouse wheel, and in the view menu, align view, align active camera to view. To animate the molecule, I'm going to start by rotating the carbon atoms in the outliner window, select carbon. I need to insert two keyframes. My rhyme for inserting keyframes is go to frame, make change, insert keyframe. Go to frame one, I'm in frame one. Make change, set the Z rotation to zero, it's already zero, insert keyframe, right click, insert single keyframe. Set the total length of the animation to 180 frames. To insert the second keyframe, go to frame, go to frame 180. Make change, set the Z rotation to 358 degrees. If you're going to loop the animation, setting it to 358 avoids having two frames at the 360 zero position. Insert keyframe, right click, insert single keyframe. Clicking play. Besides only the carbon atoms rotating, there is another problem of the speed of rotation not being constant. Change the window to Graph Editor. In the key menu, change the interpolation mode from Bezier to Linear. Change the window back to 3D view. In the Outliner window, select the Nitrogen Atoms, click the Constraints button. Click the Add Constraint button and add a Copy Rotation Constraint. Set the target to be the Carbon Atoms. Repeat the same for the Phosphorus Atoms. Add Constraint Copy Rotation and set the target to be the Carbon Atoms. Select the lamp. Click its Object Data Properties and set its Energy to 10. Click the World button and set the horizon color to black. Click the render button, scroll down, change the file type to xvid, type in a suitable folder and file name for the animation, scroll up and click the animation button and Blender will start to render. Change the window back to 3D view. That's the end of the tutorial. I'll put the finished file for you to download at my website ianscott888.com. Thanks for watching and goodbye.